There is so much golf instruction out there these days. You've got YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and especially we're looking at the driver. But how do you know what works and how do you know what's gonna work for you? Well, in this video, I've compiled what I consider to be the best tips and drills that have always given me the best results in the last 25 years that I've been coaching. This is a biggie. Get this one right and good things will start to happen. These three points, they're all important. Yeah, but this one, if I had to put one out as being number one, this would be the one, depth. Got to get some depth in the goal sink. So what am I classing as depth? Well, if we took a setup and we drew a line vertically up from the grip of the club, it's how much inwards that club moves, or that grip, I should say, moves in the back swing. So this would be a swing with very little depth. I've got some upward, but no inward. So the grip is, you know, give or take, probably directly above where it was at, at setup. This would be a goal swing where there's loads of depth. Okay, so you can see how the grippers, yes, it's also gone up into the air, but it's moved backward behind me. That's a little extreme, but the more depth that we can create, the more chance we've got. The more chance we've got of hitting the ball from the inside, which is generally advisable, the more chance we've got of hitting the ball on the upswing, which again is something we want to try and do with the driver, and it gives you a greater chance of a freer release, which lets the toe turn over and lets that club face square up quite naturally. Now, how we use the lower body, which we've just covered, should allow us to get this good depth. But I just want you to have some really nice visuals over the golf ball. Those visuals are, you set up and you imagine that you're stood against a wall. So my heels are pretty much against a wall. And I don't want to, I don't want to be able to make a backswing without hitting the wall. Many of you would be able to do that. You would be able to make a goal swing where your hands are nowhere near that wall. I want you to try and make a backswing where your focus is to get the grip of the club onto that wall. And it's gonna feel like you have to turn more. It's gonna to have to feel like you extend your arms out and away from your trail shoulder, creating some good width and some good extension, but it's the depth that we're after. That depth means I can rotate aggressively without the worry of the club kind of being thrown on the outside and coming over the top and creating those slices. This, as I say, is the big one. Get this right and you're gonna feel like you've got so much more freedom, so much more room and so much more time to hit some drives. So let's go ahead and see if I can create that movement and hit one up this third hole. Okay, let's start this video with me hitting a shot with Trapman, putting some data up on the screen and then I wanna see if you can pull out what would be the most common fault. What I see far too often, which is holding so many golfers back. Just before I do that, drop down below, give this channel a subscribe if you're not already, comments box down there, and give this a like if you did find some value in this video. Green keeper's just gone, that gives me the chance to hit this drive. So let's go ahead, hit it, and we'll see, we can have a look at the data and pull out what we want. Wasn't a bad drive kind of down there so you can see you can see the data that's on the screen at the moment um, you know carry was pretty short it was 187 yards launch angle at six degrees dynamic loft at just well 6.7 degrees ball speed at 170 so the one number and hopefully you've pulled this out and you've recognized it is the attack angle the attack angle there is minus six degrees that's not what we want. That's what I see a lot. So what that really means is that when my club hit the golf ball, it was traveling downwards towards the ground. Now, if you just look at what that does to the loft, it will generally, in most cases, it will take loft off the golf club. Not always, but in most cases. So that's why we get dynamic loft, which is how much loft has the club got, just under seven degrees. That's really low. That means the launch angle is down at just under six degrees. And if you saw the ball flight, it was very, very low. So Whilst I can hit fairways that way, with a ball speed of 170 miles an hour, I shouldn't really be carrying the ball 187 yards. That's way down. Now on the screen at the bottom, you can see a little chart. And I've just done that chart for a club head speed of 100 miles an hour. And what you can see is that it gives an idea of what distance you can achieve based on different attack angles, hitting down, hitting level, hitting up. And you can see there how hitting up on the ball just gives you so much more distance. And that distance is not through more swing speed, it's just through how the club is delivered to the ball. So if we're looking to change this attack angle, this minus six, which is really, really common, and get it to a positive number. 
give me a couple of things to do. We're going to look at setup, and I'm going to give you a couple of drills that you can do within your swing. Setup is key. Ball position relative to the middle of you. That's the zip, the buttons, your chin, your nose, the middle of you, not your feet. I want that ball to be significantly forward of the middle of you. And you can see how, as I drop that club down, the wider I have my stance, the more behind the ball this club gets or the middle of me gets. So that's why with the drive, we like this nice wide stance. We also want that ball teed up relatively high. So you can see here that I've got that ball nicely high in the peg, around about half the ball above the top of the club is a great guide. Now, when I stand with my feet this wide and my body is positioned behind the ball, the ball tends to be opposite that lead heel. So that's a secondary reference point, but it really is where it is relative to your upper body that's key. And that setup there should mean that I'm going to hit the ball much later in the goal swing. Doesn't always work that way, though. There's lots of golfers who, when viewed from the front view, have these perfect driver setups and still hit down on the golf ball. And that's very often because from the top, they'll make this type of movement and the club still comes crashing down and they have that negative attack angle. So here's a little drill I want you to do. You're going to take a head cover. You're going to place it just outside the golf ball. So what that does is it means that from setup, my club is able to move away from the golf ball without touching the head cover. And it should mean that I'm able to deliver the club back to the golf ball again without hitting the head cover. The club path, which is what this little exercise is addressing, is really, really closely related to the attack angle. If I swing to the left of target, really common to also hit down on a golf ball. And if I swing to the right of the target, really common to hit up on the golf ball. So if we're looking to change attack angle, very often we have to change path. This drill is going to help you do that. When you're hitting golf balls, what I'd love you to do, once you've got your setup correct, head covers in place, I'd love you to use your upper body, rotate and start with a golf club on the ground around about some two feet behind the golf ball. I've done this drill in previous videos. I make no apologies about doing it again. It is one of the best drills that you can do to change your attack angle and change your path. So from here, I'm going to start my golf swing with the sole objective being to miss the head cover and really sense that my club is at its lowest point around about this area here where I started with the golf club. Now, I'm not sure if Trapman will pick these numbers up because the head cover is a little in the way, but we should be able to see my attack angle change significantly based on this setup and this little exercise. So, completely different ball flight. Not sure if you picked that up and we did get some numbers and you can see there that the attack angle well almost completely changed that's 5.8 degrees up so six degrees up and the carry went up to 260 yards so way more carry and the ball actually came off the face slower so that ball came off the face slower than the first shot and went in the region of 60, 75 80 yard longer through the air incredible changes in distance and we can see that that's not through speed it wasn't because i swung faster or i hit it harder i just optimized my delivery right big stick the driver it is different it should be different it'll feel different you're gonna have some different ideas and some different concepts with the golf swing if your weight shift is the same with the driver it is with the irons you're not getting the most out of this so what is different well we're really going to focus on two areas because there are some things which are quite similar the first thing would be the setup so this time, once I get my feet in position and I stand up and I find that 50-50 position, that's how I want to set up. So I'm just going to tip over from there. So when I address the golf ball with the driver, I'm just feeling very, very balanced. And that's going to be the best way to start that golf swing. Remember we said the ball was on the ground with the other clubs. This time it's on the tee. So we are looking and we're after for a different delivery. We want this more sweeping upward hit. We can encourage that to happen by just making sure that our weight distribution is correct at the setup. Now, backswing. Good news, it's the same. We want most of our weight to be into our trail side and we want that to happen early by the time the lead arm is around the horizontal of the ground and we don't want the head to move too much. Very similar to the arm, we don't have to change anything there. As we go into transition and the downswing, good news again, it's the same as the iron. We're trying to put more force, more pressure under that lead side and most of it by the time the arms are 
level with the ground. It's the same. After that, it's when it starts to get a little bit different. And I have to say, before I go into this, this isn't something you intentionally do, it's just the, the nature of how we swing. Let me go through why this is different. I'm gonna make this a little exaggerated to demonstrate this, but let's say I took this huge wide stance. Now this is obviously too wide, but with a driver we do have a wider stance. The middle of me is much more behind my lead foot versus if I had a much narrower stance. So with the driver, when we have this wider stance, we go into this trail leg, we transition and we move into, we put the pressure into this lead side. But just notice how the middle of me is still way behind that foot. So once the pressure is into that lead side and I start to push away from the ground, it's naturally going to be pushing me up, but also backwards a little bit. When I have this super narrow stance and I put the weight there, when I push, it just kind of pushes me up. Whereas the driver, we often see through the golf ball, this push up and back, and we often feel and sense that there's then more weight on this back foot. It's absolutely fine. There's countless examples of golfers who are incredibly talented, great drivers of the golf ball, who will almost finish with a little bit of weight on the back foot. Like I said, it's not trying to do that, it's just the nature of this wide stance, the middle of you is much more behind your foot, and as you start to push, it pushes you back. And you can just do that little demonstration there. You can put your feet very close and start to push from that left side and you'll feel like it pushes you up. Big wide stance, push from the left side and notice how it's pushing me more back. So we don't really have to think about that, but it's just understanding that you might have some different feels through impact with the driver versus your iron. So let's go ahead and hit this one. I'm gonna take a slightly wider stance than I normally would because it might help us demonstrate this a little bit better. But there's my 50-50, super wide stance. And that is a perfect drive. But look at my finish position from that face on camera. I feel like I'm leaning back almost, well, probably 60, 70, 80% of my weight is on my back leg. But it wasn't because I fell back. I actually got into that lead side correctly but then the way I went through impact caused that to happen. And I don't know if you saw the ball fly there, but I'd be very, very happy with that drive. This next exercise is brilliant to do on the golf course. Potentially to the side of the tee as your play partners are hitting their shots, you can do this. It's brilliant for some pre-tee shot feels. I've got my tee or where my ball would be. And then, you know, around about six to eight inches in front of that, I've got my golf bag. I'm going to take my dress. I'm going to hover the club a few inches above the ground. And I'm gonna make some back swings and some downswing movements where I try and get the toe of my club to strike the side of my bag. And you can see that there. What it's doing is again, it's teaching me or getting me to learn how to take that club face, which on the downswing is pointing way over towards where you're viewing this from and learning how to rotate it and actually get it a little bit closed at this point. Those of you who struggle, you will very often have, as you start down, lots of upper body movement, too aggressive, too much tension in the hands and the arms, and you're gonna find that the heel of the golf club or the club shaft tends to hit the bag, and you can see how the club face on this occasion will be pointing way out to the right. That's gonna give me a pretty poor result. So as I stand here, I'm just gonna make some little movements and just get the toe of the club just to feel like it makes contact with my bag. Now. As I said, if I'm just the side of the tee box doing this, great. When it's my turn to hit, I peg my ball up. I've just given myself some really great feels on what I need to do to square that club face. I'd almost guarantee that if you do that before your tee shot, it's not going to go to the right. You're going to get a much, much better result. Now, this fourth point, potentially the most important one so far. Really key that you get this one right. So stage number four is trying to put it all together when there's a golf ball there. Now you can see that I've got one of my alignment sticks in the ground. This alignment stick is so important that we have this in place. You'll notice that I've got it, you know, around about, what is that, four feet back from the golf ball in at a pretty shallow angle pointing over the golf ball. Now, if I take an address and just do a normal takeaway and return the club to the ball, you can see that I would not be hitting the alignment stick. So we know that's in the right place. Why is it there? Well, Watch what happens if I put myself into this downswing position. From here, golfers realize that they need to square the face. They realize that the club face does not point towards the target and it's something that obviously we need to do. But 
One of the ways that we often see golfers try to square the face is with the forearm. If I use the forearm and rotate it, I will square the face. But you can see where the club has gone. Now the club kind of points where I wanted to point, but the golf club's coming in from pretty much the, the incorrect angle, as you can see there. It might help me control the face, but I'm gonna get some pretty poor results. So it's pretty common to see a golfer who struggles with an open face, fixing it, by trying to make this movement here. Yes, you'll have some success with the face, your club pass is gonna be way left, you're gonna get some pretty terrible results. So the alignment stick is there to make sure that we're not doing that. We're not falling into that trap, we're doing it the correct way. So the exercise here, which is number four, would be can we set up to our target, which in this case is the green in the distance. Can I make some little goal swings, missing the alignment stick, and make the ball head off left of that flag. If I can do that, it's gonna give me everything I need to know about the little swing I made. I'm gonna go pretty slow speed, but the goal here is to miss the alignment stick and make the ball go left.